Hi there, I'm B and I have something very exciting to tell you. My new game. You play as a witch or a wizard and you can explore, harvest, craft, have relationship with other students and deal with the Dark Academy and much more. Sounds good? You wanna know more? Follow us on Twitter, hang out with us on Discord, all the links are in the description below. After that quick announcement, let's move on to today's video. For today we have procedural animation. We're gonna add a look at animation on the robot. Now the robot will be able to look at objects on the environment. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and let's do this. We need a few things. We're gonna create an interactive object that is going to be a base for many different interactive objects in the future. For today, we're going to create uh, the base and it will also be the element that the robot can look at. In this scene, you can see this example scene. I prepared this interactive object and as you can see, it has a hamburger on top and that's the element that the robot will look at. This is a basic interactive object that it will be the parent of all the other type of interactive objects for future videos. It can be a door, it can be an element that you take, all of that will be on the future. For this element, for this tutorial, we are working with this interactive object. So let's check how this works. Okay, here we go, this is our robot. Then, when the robot enters to the interactive object through a trigger, it will start looking at the hamburger. And I can illustrate better if I use the stealth mode. You can see the robot tries to look at the hamburger, and when it goes out, it will stop looking at it. The look at animation, procedural animation, it also have uh, limits on the rotation, so the, the head of the robot won't go crazy for that. I decided to use an interactive object because I want to reuse this element in the future, but you can just prepare the look at object and not use an interactive object, just an actor that you have a reference on the character. But let's check how I did all of this. Let's start first with the, with the robot and the character and prepare the look at animation. If you open the animator, you will remember this is where we left the animation blueprint and with the locomotion blend space for the movement. To make the look at anima animation, we need a node to control the head bone. So we need the transform modify bone. This node, the skeletal node, con control node, transform modify bone. And we just need to block this there and there. Automatically, Unreal will add this component to local and local to component because Unreal needs to convert from local to the bone component and from the component to local. And we need to change a few things right there. So very important to select the bone to modify. In this case, I want to modify through the rotation of the head. So let's go to head. It is that one. Okay. Great. And then we don't need the translation and the scale, so we can ignore those ones. So let's remove the that the translation on also the scale. Compile and yeah, we have a warning. Because we need to also add this, we need to change this the rotation. Yes. We want to add to the existing, so it will keep the rest of the animations, but it will add uh, any type of rotation or uh, alpha that we have here. 
and the okay the warning has gone so here we have a rotation with the which is an f rotator and an alpha we are going to control these two elements through a few variables that are defined in robot anim instance I already have the code compiled and all of that, so I have the, those variables right there, rotation head and rotation alpha. But then let me show you first how this works. So the alpha we're gonna is it's useful when you want to do transitions, like in my previous video, we use that for the stealth mode and to add uh, an alpha so the transition between run and stealth will be smooth and not like a snap. But in this case, we're going to use this alpha to enable and disable that rotation. So at the moment, it's 1, 0, but if I set to 0, 0, that rotation is not going to be affected. Now, if I set this to 1, then I can control this, the rotation of the head, and that's what we're going to do on, on code. Up and down, and we also, we, we will also add some limit, limits so the head won't go crazy and go like that we don't want that or like that a few important things for this code this is a mixamo rig so the bone has different orientation that than uh, unreal orientation so on the code you will see some adjustments the best way to do this is trial and error so what i did in my case is uh, add a UA log to see what is the proper conversion but you will see that it's not difficult it's just depend on your rig and the orientation of the bones you might need to add some adjustments okay let's set this to zero and I'm just gonna use those variables because this is what we want we want to control all of this by code and not write that because if we don't use that and we have this one and we set a rotation and then for example we set something like that we play now we will have the head rotating that way which could be useful if you want to have a slight rotation on your animation all the time something like that to adjust something but we want to do the look at look at look at animation so we need those variables. Let's put that there and let's put this there. I set this one to zero zero and that one to zero 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 because there's the initial rotation and I don't want any kind of rotation as soon as I play. Okay. And just like that, we can control that, those bones. And this is this node is very useful. You want to control all the type of uh, bones the only thing you need to do really is to select the bone and you have the whole skeleton right there okay before we go to the code we need to do one more thing which is add a socket to the skeleton so we can click here and this is the our skeleton So we want to add a skelet, a socket on the head because we're gonna use that uh, as a, for generate the rotation between the object and the head. For that, we just need to select the bone and then add a socket and set the name. So as you can see, I already have that. With this, this name is very important because we are going to add the we're going to use this name on on the code so i don't need this but just set the same thing for name the head and the socket name head head socket so let's remove this one okay let's go back now to the blueprint the blueprint and let's open the robot anime instance so to have those variables we just need to add this. We have the an F rotator with rotation head, which is an U property, and a rotation head alpha to enable and disable this animation. And finally, we need a few getters. 
uh, to access this from the character, which is where we are really going to control the, the alpha. So there's this uh, setters, sorry. So we just set the, the value and for both of them. Let's go now to the character class. For the transition, the smooth transition, I have this boolean for the transition when the robot it does, doesn't want to rotate the head anymore or when the robot exits the, the interactive object. And I also have the current head rotation, which is an F rotator, and some limits to limit the left and right rotation and the up and down rotation. These two uh, variables are edit anywhere because I want to control them on the blueprint character. With this method right there, we control all of this. And this method is being called on the tick. So we have the tick and we call the update look at actor with the delta seconds. Here's the magic. Because we're going to use the current interactive, which is the declare right here. This is our reference. I'll show you how to set this reference later through these two methods. One is to set the interactive in range and the other one is to clear interactive in range. I use these two methods from the interactive base when the robot enters the collision. So I use this current interactive to do all of that. So first thing, on the ticket sign is going to check for if we have uh, any kind of current interactive. This is because in the future I'm going to use this for all the elements that I will show you, but also to the look at. Okay. So first thing we need to do is to get the location of the socket. You remember that one the, that this is the socket that is, we set. So we get the location, which is in wall coordinates, from the mesh. This is the robot and it will get from the skeleton. But this is how you access the socket. And sockets are very useful when you want to attach elements to something on the on the character, for example, a gun, or you want to attach an object to the hand. With sockets, you can do that. Right, next thing we need to do is to get the look at location. And in this case, we sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so we need the look at point on the current interactive. This is just, as you will see later, it's just a scene actor component that I have inside here. But instead of this, you can just have an, a normal actor and get the location. That's it. So this is exactly the same, but in my case, I'm using that component inside the current interactive. Now we can use this fine look at rotation with the head location and the look at location to get the rot rotator. This is when things get complicated or it can be a bit tricky as I said before because my robot is slightly different and uh, I needed to adjust a few things. But anyways, uh, first thing we need to do is to have the dislocate this uh, rotation between the two elements and also take account of the rotation of the uh, character. So we need to do this, these differences. Get the actor rotation and subtract to the look at rotation to get a new rotator. Uh, this is one of the adjustments that I did. Uh, you will normally just need to subtract this element to this element. And this is the second adjustment. So, as you can see, this rotator is waiting for beat, yo, and roll. And I had to swap the order because of that different orientation on the bones. But you wouldn't need to do this if you have a uh, same orientation, I think. I don't know, I'd, I had to try and check this and yeah, I, I had to do that. It, it wasn't that easy, but the theory is this. So this is the final target rotator rotation that you will need for the head and after that we have the limits for the left and right and the up and down so what i do is basically set this to zero again to prevent 
the head going crazy. And important here, uh, we just need the absolute value because we don't really care if it's negative or positive. We just care the, the we only care about the angle. Okay, now we just need the current head rotation. And to do that interpolation or that smooth between the current head rotation, which is zero when you start playing and the target, uh, we can use this uh, R interp2. So we interpolate between the current rotation and the target using the delta time seconds. And this is the speed. So in my case, it's four, sec four seconds, but if you increase that, the rotation will be, will be faster. And finally, we just need to send that rotation to the animator. Remember, this is a reference. Okay, this happens when the robot is inside the, the area of the, in the interactive object. When the, the robot is outside, we do something similar, which is basically interpolate from the current rotation, whatever it is, to zero. The same speed send that rotation to the animator and uh, finally uh, check if it's nearly zero if it's, this is the initial which is zero 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 we just set everything to zero and we disable that animation and stop doing this check and that's it so let me show you how to how i implemented the interactive in range this is fairly simple so when the robot enters to the interactive we set the reference, so on the tick, this won't be null and it will start doing the calculations. We set this to false because we don't want to do that transition and we enable the rotation of the head. When the robot exits the, the zone, it will just enable the transition. It will set this to null and yeah, that is enough. So yeah, uh, with this, we can have that effect. So my recommendation as always is to close the editor and compile everything to have the, the properties and everything on the blueprint and don't do it through Unreal because sometimes you don't see the these new properties on the on the animator and it's frustrating. So just make sure to compile that way and leave Visual Studio to open Unreal. Let's go to the interactive base to see how I implemented this element. So it's fairly easy. This is an actor, a new actor C++ class with a root scene, which is a scene component to keep everything together, an interactive mesh component to represent the element, the look at point. This is the, the one that we are interested in. This is the look at point where the actor is going to look at and the collision for when the, the robot enters the, the area. This is important as well. This is the getter method that you saw on the character. You can see, get look at point and then the location. So just a getter that gets that scene component. I also have a, a reference to the current character character which is the robot and two functions to get the for the triggers begin overlap and end overlap okay the constructor is just to create all the sub default objects the root the interactive mess the look at point all of them and all of them are attached to the root component Finally, it's important to add the, the events on component begin overlap to detect when the robot enters the interactive base and on end overlap. And both of them are fairly simple. I'm just getting the actor that is inside the trigger and I cast that to, to the character, to the robot. And if it's okay, it will send a reference. When the robot exit, uh, we'll do the same but clear interactive with uh, in range with this so with this we will really activate the that animation but this is not really this is because i want to use this interactive base for to create this game that i'm trying to game to to create to show all of these type of systems 
Okay, now if we go to Unreal, we need to create that interactive. Let me show you my my version, which is as you can see, it has this is uh, based on that interactive base uh, with that interactive mesh, which is just a cube. The look at point that's important, so I can is. This is very useful to make it sync component because I can move this on the editor instead of doing by code, which is very hard. The interactive collision and the static mesh to, with that hamburger. I will put, put on the description where I get this, this cute hamburger because it's from a really, really talented artist, which has also a Patreon, so I will link all of that below. And she has other type of other cute things as well so yeah if you don't remember how to create an interactive or object it's fairly simple so we just need to go to the class okay here we have the class create blueprint based on that we just need to set a name and a location for example that and create a blueprint and this is what you get. So from here, you just need to adjust that. Okay, now if we test all of these, we can see that everything works as intended. Yeah, we can still do the... You can see the robot trying to look at that with that limit. Which also can we can control from the, from the character. Okay, that... Okay. Uh, let me show you the blueprint, finally. The, so if I go to the blueprint and then you will see that I have those limits there in the section head rotation we have max left right rotation and max up and down so we can just add, add, adjust that to have less or more rotation and that's everything for this tutorial thanks for watching subscribe share like and don't forget that I have a patreon page so if you want to get the files for the this these files, these project files, you can subscribe to my my Patreon and it helps because it helps me to continue doing this type of tutorials for free. So see you next time on the next video. Bye!